And of course, I'd never been trained, because we're not trained to talk about dreams in the Western psychology. And so they would come in with all these notebooks full of dreams. And they would tell me the dreams. And uh, I really didn't know what to say to what they were telling me, because the dreams are really elaborate, and they had a lot of information in them. And so what I tried to do is, uh, one of the, I tell people that you only have to know two things to be a, a therapist in a Western way. And one of them is when you don't know what's going on, which for a lot of us is most of the time, and when a, a patient tells us something, what we say back to the patient is, well, what do you think it means, right? And so I tried that. And when I said that, they said, well, if we knew what it meant, we wouldn't be here talking to you, would we? <laughs> and so they took that away from me, too. <laughs> and so everything I'm doing is wrong. And so then I tried the, the other trick that you have to know to be a, a Western trained therapist, and when you're not knowing what to do, is that you kind of take your hand and uh, go kind of like that, and you go, hmm. And you see, you didn't say anything, but it, it tricks the patient into thinking that you actually know what's going on, but you really don't. And, and it buys you a little bit of time. So I tried that, and, and now I'm still doing the needs assessment. And what happened is that by me just listening to the dreams that people were bringing, they started getting better. People started getting better from addictions, from violence, and stuff like that. And so now I'm kind of a little bit confused. But now back to the needs assessment, I, uh, I go back to some of the elders and say, I really don't know what to do because everything I do, you reject. So what do I do? Because you're paying me money to do this needs assessment. And I feel like I have to have a responsibility in doing something. And so the assignment they gave me, what they said was, uh, what you need to do is you need to go up into the mountains and you need to consult the spirits. That's what they told me. And I had never taken a course in consulting spirits one-on-one. -on -one. And so I'm like, okay, you know, I didn't want to sound totally stupid, but I said, well, how do you do that? And so I didn't, instead of saying anything, I, when I'd go back up to the truck and when nobody was looking, I would go walk out into the trees and uh, you know I had to, and I had gone to Christian Sunday school as a youngster and I had heard stories about Moses and those guys, you know, where the flaming bush appeared and, and God talked to them. And so I was hoping that that would happen to me, but it didn't happen. You know, there was no flaming bush, God didn't talk to me. <clears throat> and so, but now I'm seeing the people that I'm seeing in therapy, uh, in the, in the green truck, the IHS truck, I'm starting to experience a peculiar thing while I'm seeing people. And what I'm experiencing is I'm having a feeling that there's other people in the, in the truck with us. And, and it's getting really strong, and I'm, I'm starting to think that it's maybe stress, but it's only happening when there's people sitting in front of me. It doesn't happen once they leave. And, and by this time, I had a, in Counseling 101, they had already taught me that it is really incorrect to, uh, to hallucinate in front of your patients. So I really couldn't be going like, whoa, what was that? Because, you know, that's not correct to do that when you're sitting in front of, of a person that is bearing their soul to you. And so I'm sitting there and really not knowing what to do and, and getting really nervous. And then this experience is starting to really work on me because in my ego mind, I'm trying to say it's nothing. It's just stress. But then in my spirit mind, it's saying this is something. And because I'm, I don't know what to do with it, it's starting to split. And so I'm, I'm, in, I'm starting to get into pretty big trouble here. And I can't tell my clinical supervisor because if I tell him, uh, I wouldn't be here talking to you today. I'd be thrown out of school and put in the hospital and Dr. Schindler would give me some of her good medicine and then the experience would go away, which maybe I should have done that. <laughs> but anyway, and so uh, one day uh, this 
the traditional healer, this trans doctor, appeared at my door, and I didn't know what to do with him. I, I never talked to anybody like that. And he, he had a purpose. I mean, he knew why he was there. I had no idea why he was there. And so he sat, sat down and started talking and, and started using tobacco. And, and, uh, and halfway through his, whatever he was telling me, I thought I could tell him what I'm experiencing because um, if he were to report me, nobody's going to believe him because he is the Indian doctor. And, and maybe he'll just tell me that it's my imagination and I need to take some rest and it'll all go away. And that's what I was hoping he would tell me. But when I told him what I was experiencing, he told me the exact opposite. He says, the reason you're feeling what you're feeling is, be is because they are there. And I'm like, who's there? You know, in my mind I'm thinking, like, what is he talking about? And he went on to explain, he said that uh, everything we do affects seven generations. You've all heard that. He says, but in a spirit time and in dream time, the direction of the seven generations doesn't have to be forward. It can also be backward. And he went on to explain that the communities, it was a consortium of about 15 tribes that I was working with. In a 30-year period between 1870 and 1900, 80% of the people had been exterminated to where there are complete tribes that didn't exist anymore. And because of that trauma that happened in that community, a lot of the ancestors that had gone to the spirit world without the proper grieving and the proper ceremony <clears throat> were coming into the therapy session that their descendants were having so that they could also heal themselves. And I mean, that's a lot of information to be giving me who has no context to carry that. And, and so now what to do with it? And, and so I started to talk to the patients about what he said and it made perfect sense to them to say yes, because in their dreams, that's what they were dreaming about. They're dreaming about the ancestors, they're dreaming about the trauma, and it was being passed down. So now I have something new to tell on my needs assessment. And so when I went and talked to the health board and people and told them sort of what I was finding, they said, uh, yeah, that's, that's the problem. They say the, the problem with our community here is that our spirit and our soul has been wounded. And everything else that you're finding like the addictions, the depression, the suicide, all of that is sitting on top of this soul wound, of the spirit wound that we have. And if we don't heal the spirit or the soul wounding, then it doesn't matter what else you do because uh, it's not ever gonna get better. And so that was a huge revelation to me as far as uh, the work that needs to be done uh, with, uh, with Native people. <coughs> And shortly after that, I remember uh, there was an Indian Health Service uh, conference that happened and they invited me because they knew I was working in this remote area. And they asked me to come and talk about what I was doing. And, and I thought, oh good, I can go tell the IHS people this cool stuff that I'm finding out. And, uh, and so, you know, they gave me like 20 minutes and I, I talked a little bit about what I just said. And there was uh, two PHS people you know, in uniform, and one Indian guy and one white guy that walked up the aisle as soon as I was finished. And I thought, oh, they're going to come and shake my hand and say, good job. <laughs> and uh, instead what happened is that they kind of shook my hand and held it. And one of them whispered in my ear and says, what the hell do you think you're doing? He says, you're going to ruin your career before it starts. And I was like, oh my gosh, what have I done here? You know, I, I've insulted. Uh, the powers that be, and uh, and then I go back uh, to the elders of the community. I say, you know, I really can't be doing this anymore because I'm ruining my career here. And and they says, no, you you absolutely need to keep going the way you're going. And uh, and so that was uh, a part of why I continued to do the work because I, I wanted to stop because I thought this is really crazy stuff. The fact that we can inherit the trauma of our ancestors and it can give us symptoms and make us sick today. It was something that was really, really out there. 
And it still is in a lot of places, but now it's becoming more and more to where people can actually talk about it. But at the same time that this is happening is where uh, I met my root teacher, and I need to tell you about him because pretty much a lot of what I'm talking about here today and, and that I talk about wherever I go uh, comes from his teaching. And so it's important that uh, I tell you the lineage uh, 